Hello and welcome back to Hilbert Spaces, the video series where we talk a lot about the geometry such an inner product space gives us. And indeed, in today's part 8, we will continue with the important approximation formula which holds in Hilbert Spaces. We will show the whole proof and then you will also see why we need the assumptions we have stated. However, before we start with this technical explanation, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, there are a lot of rewards for supporters, like early access to the videos or PDF versions for all the videos. Just click the link in the description to see what you can find. With that out of the way, let's immediately recall the approximation formula. For this we need two important ingredients. First, we have an inner product space, which should be complete. In other words, we really need a Hilbert space here. And the second ingredient is a special subset U, which in most applications is a whole subspace. However, it cannot just be any subspace, because it has to be a closed one. Moreover, in the case that U is not a whole subspace, the subset should be at least a convex one. It simply means that all the connection lines between two points in U lie completely in U again. So these are our two assumptions and then we get that for each x in our Hilbert space x, there exists a unique best approximation inside our set U. And since it's unique, we could call it x restricted to U. And the meaning of this best approximation is just that the distance between x and U is minimized. And here please note, the distance we measure with respect to the norm, which is induced by our inner product. Hence the length of this difference vector is exactly the distance between x and u. So please recall that this distance was defined by an infimum in the real numbers. Therefore it's clear that this infimum always exists, but now the claim here is that the infimum is actually a minimum. And exactly this is what we will prove today. And I would say for the whole video, it's good to have a rough picture in mind. Just imagine that we have our vector x here. And in order to make it simple, let's represent our subset u by a line. Indeed, this would be the visualization when we have a subspace. And now the minimal distance is what we would find here. And the claim of the approximation formula is that this one is given by a difference vector. Hence, our special element is what we find here inside u. So this vector is our unique best approximation. So it's good to split the proof into two parts and as you will see, it's better to start with the existence. And for this, we will first go to our infimum definition here. It's an infimum on the real number line and in the case that u is not the empty set, we definitely know that this infimum is a finite number. And obviously the whole approximation formula does not make sense for the empty set, so maybe we should also exclude it in the assumption. Of course this assumption is already clear from the existence statement in the next sentence, but to be precise we definitely should exclude it. Ok, but now this implies that the infimum can be approximated by a sequence in U. So this means we can find such a sequence and call it UN. And now most importantly, we don't have to assume that this sequence is convergent at all. We just know that the elements lie completely in U and that the norms here converge to the infimum. Indeed, this immediately follows by the definition of the infimum. And here please never forget, this infimum is what we call the distance between the vector x and the subset U. Ok, so now we have the existence of such a sequence and now with that one we can calculate more. And you might already guess, what we want to use is the geometry we have in our Hilbert space. This means we will consider the norm squared and use our parallelogram law. In fact, we have shown that the parallelogram law exactly tells us that the norm is induced by an inner product. Ok, so now you can see, here we consider the difference between un and um for two different indices n and m and if this difference here in the norm goes to zero when n and m go to infinity, then we have a so-called Cauchy sequence. So this will be our goal, so I would say let's bring x back into the game. This is important because it's the only thing we know about our sequence un. 
And of course, it's not a big problem at all. We just subtract x and then we add it again. So we have the difference of two vectors and there we want to apply our parallelogram law. And maybe to make it simple, let's call the first one v and the second one w. And now the parallelogram identity tells us that we have a factor 2 and then the norm of v squared and then the same with the vector w squared. However, you should note that the left hand side here was not complete because we should have the difference of the two vectors v and w but also the addition. Which means to make it correct we have to subtract this addition on the right hand side. And that's it. This is our parallelogram law from part 4. So please note again, here we have used that we actually have an inner product space. And now in the next step let's go back to our original vectors un, um and x. This means the first part here for v we can substitute x minus un and for w we have the same just with um. And now these two parts should not be a problem because by assumption we already know that they will converge to our distance x to u. Therefore the crucial question now is what happens to the last part. So v plus w is just un plus um and minus 2 times x. And naturally we can also make this nicer by bringing x to the front. And moreover we can also pull out this factor 2 from the norm. Then we just get x minus 1 half the addition of un and um. And there we have reached the point that we need our convex subset. However, first we should not forget that everything here is squared as before. Okay, but now inside our norm here we have a special linear combination of two vectors in u. In fact, if you know some linear algebra you might remember that this is something we call a convex combination. And moreover we can immediately visualize that. Just imagine we have the two vectors un and um. This means in the picture we have the zero vector here and the two vectors describe points in our space. And now we can just form the connection line between those points. And now you can show that the middle point on this line is exactly given by this linear combination. Hence the whole thing is not a big problem, we just get this middle point. And by assumption we know that the whole line and therefore also this middle point lies in u again. So there you see, this is why we need the assumption of a convex subset. So the whole thing holds for every n and m, which is important because in the end we want to send n and m to infinity. Therefore let's see what we can say about this second part. First of all, the definition of the distance between x and u is given by an infimum, so we already know that this norm here is definitely larger or equal than this infimum. In other words, if the limit exists, we already have a lower bound here. So the question is, can we also get an upper bound? And to show this, let's pull in the factor 2 again. And then we can use our triangle inequality to analyze the two parts separately. So first we have x minus un and second we have x minus um. And by assumption we already know these limits because this is how we have chosen our sequence. Namely for n and m to infinity we have the distance x to u here and there. In other words in the limit we also have the distance two times. Hence this is our upper bound and now the sandwich theorem for sequences strikes. Which means the sequence on the left hand side here has to be convergent and the limit is given by 2 times the distance x to u. And this one we can use to form our limit n and m to infinity on both parts before. So let's make this clear. Now we get the following. So this is the formula from before and now we send n and m to infinity. So by definition of our sequence un this thing here converges to the distance x to u squared. And then we also have it here so 2 times times 2 again so we have it exactly 4 times. And now we have shown before that on the right we also have 2 times the distance x to u and also squared. So it's exactly the same and in the limit here we get 0. And now please note since the limit here is 0 for n and m to infinity it implies that our sequence un is a Cauchy sequence. 
And moreover, we have two informations about un as well. First, every element lies in u. And second, everything happens in our complete Hilbert space X. So the conclusion is, it's a convergent sequence as well. So you could say that the limit is a well-defined element in the Hilbert space X. However, now the other information comes in, we know that u is a closed subset in X as well. So we cannot leave this set with a sequence, which means the limit of the sequence also has to lie in u. And there we have it. This means that a best approximation exists. So it definitely exists as an element in u, and now we just have to show that it's uniquely given as well. So the last part of the proof is now the uniqueness. And maybe surprisingly, this one is not so hard anymore, because we have already done all the work before. And as often for a uniqueness proof, we just have to assume that we have two elements given. So maybe let's call the two best approximations here u tilde and u hat. So both are elements in u and they also satisfy our best approximation formula. Which simply means that the distance x to u is given as the norm of x minus u tilde. And in the same way, now also for x minus u hat. Okay, but now we can just define a sequence where we just jump from one element to the other back and forth. So let's call this one un again, and now we know it starts with u tilde, then it goes to u hat, and so on. So it's just alternating between two elements, which means it's a well-defined sequence in u. However, now the thing is, this sequence satisfies everything we have shown before. Simply because it definitely has the property that it approximates the distance function as well. There is no question about this limit at all, because the left hand side here is actually a constant sequence, because it's given by our distance function. So this important property is satisfied, which means everything from above applies to this sequence as well. In particular, we have shown it has to be a Cauchy sequence, which means it's also a convergent sequence. However, the only possibility that such an alternating sequence here is convergent is only given if it's actually a constant sequence. And there we have it, two best approximations have to coincide and the uniqueness is proven. And with that we are finally done, this is the whole proof of the approximation formula. And as you will see, it's an important result which we will use a lot in the next videos. So I really hope I meet you again and have a nice day, bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.